Do you think the average level of graphics cards are improving faster than the demand video games put on them? And is this another reason companies like NVIDIA are driving up prices? So a bit of a chicken and egg situation there with NVIDIA being dirty on the end. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because seems not much struggles with my 3070 at 4K in the current gaming market. Okay, have you played Cyberpunk 2077? This is it's a relatively new game. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very interesting question, isn't it? Um, I think the pricing thing, it kind of goes two ways because on one hand, you could sort of say, yeah, I guess NVIDIA are trying to charge more of a premium because, you know, lower tier cards are adequate for gaming. So then they try and charge you, you know, through the works for crazy cards that aren't necessarily necessary. But I think that's more just about I think it's more based on what people are just willing to pay. There's high rollers out there. We've talked about this many times before, that there are people with very deep pockets that are willing to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars for very marginal improvements. Yeah, absolutely. So that's I think that's largely the driving factor for prices going up. And the other issue you face in sort of thinking it in that way is that games and what games can do are always based on the lowest common denominator. So you don't want a game to come out that can't run on the majority of people's GPUs. They're largely hamstrung by that. You can obviously add in extra effects for higher cards. It's scalable to a degree. Yes. But But the, the level to which most games scale is... You know, most of the effects are still enabled on your lower it, settings. It's, di- and- you cr- it's difficult to create three different versions of the game to, to yeah, cater for those different. So, like most games, when you go from medium to ultra settings, mm-hmm. are doing things like increasing the resolution of shadows. They're not mm-hmm. turning shadows on, right? Mm-hmm. Like they're not going crazy on draw distances and stuff because a lot of these cards still can't handle it and those sorts of things. So, I think. There is some merit in saying that games aren't improving as fast as graphics cards, but that's also, again, based on the sort of lowest common denominator that people are using. The hardware paves the way. Yeah, that's you right. Can't, so, you end up with a crisis-type situation or worse. You have to yes. have the hardware there so then game yeah. developers know what they're working with. And I know a lot of people liked Crisis because it was a very future-looking game, mm-hmm. so you'd run it years down the track and see what your game does but Mm. in my opinion it doesn't make any sense for game developers to do that because the majority of people play games when they come out it's the it's a lot of wasted effort yeah it's also the easiest way to get the unoptimized game type you know yeah because they're like oh we've made these ridiculous features for for the future when there was maybe a technique that could have been done better but i think the main reason why we're seeing this situation happening now is because there's been stagnation for a long time in the lower to mid range of the market. And this has been happening before the current situation of GPUs right now. Because I remember back when you were reviewing cards like the 5500 XT, for example, there was no GPU shortage then. And that card still wasn't really providing you that much more yeah. than the RX 580s of the day and GTX 1060s. I was going to say Pascal, yeah. uh, not Pascal, Polaris has been around. Yes. But, yeah. Same with the GTX 1650 and GTX 1660 series. Mm. Back when those came out, again, not that much of an improvement. So mm. games aren't going to improve in what they can do until those $200 type GPUs are much more powerful because then that gives game developers the freedom to include many more features. Yeah, and I actually revisited like the RX 580 earlier in the year and found that on medium settings, like pretty much every game, I think it was Cyberpunk 2077 being the only exception, ran at like 60 FPS on medium type settings, Yeah, uh, if I'm recalling correctly. So it's still a very capable gra- uh, gaming graphics card at 1080p anyway. And then some games medium to low at 1440p. So until that thing's like dead, dead, like you just can't use it, you're not going to see a, a huge leap forward. Yeah, and again, we're right at the start of a console generation. So a lot of the new game engines and techniques that are probably in development at the moment aren't going to come out for several years, which is, you know, that that is potentially going to cause some of these cards that are, might seem good enough now to suddenly seem not good enough anymore, mm-hmm. especially cards that don't support more current generation techniques like don't have great direct x12 ultimate support those might start to struggle but again that's going to take some time so yeah, i think what might, you might be seeing pretty with the 3070 for now i would expect that in a couple of years once we start getting game engines designed with the next generation in mind mm-hmm. that you'll you'll quickly find that your 3070 doesn't handle 4k very well especially with unreal engine 5 i know some people sort of looking at the demo there and some of the things you can do in that engine uh, very easily make these GPUs 
run at their knees without even factoring in ray tracing. So. Well, in my opinion, the, the thing that really makes games look the most realistic, the most immersive, is big textures. Big textures, big draw distances. And they yeah. require big VRAM buffers. Yeah, big... Um, so... I, that's one of the reasons why I think Flight Simulator looks so good is mm. because look at all that stuff it's loading in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, lighting techniques, I think you've reached that point. So, so again, that's going to limit yeah. some things. But by today's standards, a 3070 is basically, what, 20, 2080 Ti? It's essentially similar. It's a bit range yeah. now, yeah. But the 2080 Ti was an insanely powerful graphics card yeah. not that long ago, and that's essentially what you're still running. So you're running a previous generation flagship card. So, yeah, that's going to be pretty impressive at 4K. Yep. For, for a bit to come 